All right, now we are finally set up with the interview. So I will pass this off to Osborne, who's going to be chatting with Kevin Alperez about Somos Familia Valle. Everybody, uh, a lot of you know me as Osborne, but for the purposes of this interview, uh, you can call me Oscar Manzanares. Uh, I am the uh, main organizer behind Completeathon 2023. And we are here with an amazing interview with the president and co-founder of Somos Familia Valle, Kevin Perez. How are you doing? Hi, Oscar. Thank you for having me. And hello, everybody at Completed Todd. And excited to be here and ready to answer some questions. I did see see y'all playing online, so it's it's great to see. And um, I'm also really into it, so I'm I'm, I'm watching. <laughs> It's great to hear that you're a fan of, of the of the content that we're making here. And because we're huge fans of this cause and the charity and, and the entire community behind it. Um, and so we're here to have this interview because we can get more insight as to what uh, Somos Familia Valle is, who y'all are, what you're doing, and uh, how people can get involved in the community if they so desire to. Um, so the very first question that I have for you is, uh, can you describe uh, the mission behind Somos Familia Valle? You know, we've had our own blurbs for them, uh, but I think you uh, can go into more detail as to exactly what is it that Somos Familia Valle stands for. Yeah, so Somos Familia Valle is a local grassroots um, LGBT organization in the San Fernando Valley. So um, what I love about Somos, it's uh, um, we use the first three letters of San Fernando Valley, so SFV. And so we came up with the name Somos Familia Valle. So in English, it means we're a valley family. So we're a local gender and racial justice uh, organization. Uh, we're a bit different from um, other organizations as um, we do more uh, uh, kind of take away away from the HIV field and kind of go more into um, doing uh, work that uh, really addresses uh, cultural issues, immigration issues, issues of people of color, uh, and then things that uh, really uh, impact us uh, us economically. Um, and we've done it locally here in the San Fernando Valley, and also we have done national work. So it's exciting because uh, we started in 2014. Um, so we're turning 10 next year, um, but we've only had 501c3 status since 2017. So we've been growing as a movement. I always say we're doing movement work, um, but yeah, and with our 501c3 status, we've been four years. So it's exciting because everybody has been seeing our growth as an organization. We started just as a group of queer people, just, you know, coming together, um, eating, drinking, and we're like, oh, there's nothing here locally in the Valley. So we decided like we, you know, as a group of friends, you just like, let's create something. Let's, let's do an event. Um, and yeah, it, our first event was San Fernando Valley Pride. It was so small. It was like a, uh, we planned for like 40 people, but like 100 people came through. And now we're wow. planning Pride every year. So we, we've done Pride um, now. Yeah, like the, the same age as the organist. So we, we just did our ninth one um, this past June. And also that event is just growing every year. So we're just excited in our growth. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, that was like one of the things I was going to ask. How has it grown throughout the years? And it seems that it still has massive uh, growth. Um, and it's very nice to see how uh, you took you and a small group of people were able to make an, an entire really booming community that helps people find a place that accepts them for them and help fight all the uh, issues that affect marginalized communities within the United States and within the San Antonio Valley area. Um, one thing that I want to ask you is like, what does the mission behind uh, Somos Familia Valle mean to you personally as like an individual? Yeah, so for me personally, I, I came out when I was, um, like 13, 14, the transition from eighth grade to ninth grade, I think <laughs> that's 13, 14, <laughs> right? I just remember I was like, um, you know, just coming, you know, puberty and all that and all the mm -hmm. awkwardness of like what's happening to my body and like also um, realizing that I was different from those folks around me. Um, I was very femme as a, as a youth um, and very just weird, <laughs> mm -hmm. but um um, yeah, uh, through that experience, I realized like, oh, I'm different. I I, I have this queer experience. I'm liking um, the the boys and like in my in my classrooms and stuff. And I just didn't really know where to go. I didn't have no like 
mentor or just like friends to really talk about it so um in in ninth grade i came out and i was like okay i'm queer and i'm i'm and then it, i didn't know how the world was going to react to me but yeah i experienced a lot of like bullying um i didn't get no family acceptance um and it was very awkward it was very a space of like i don't know where i'm at or is my identity is valid or i'm just confused and you know mm -hmm. you start realize looking like to other answers and like people start putting you down and i think through that experience and through my experience in high school like i well i i, I went to school to be like a school counselor because of this um to to really change that that environment in schools and change that um kind of thought of like how can we support youth how can we support youth coming out people who are in transition and yeah that's kind of how i got into this work i was always in that mindset always remembering my childhood and um growing like just come you know after a couple years you know i was out and proud i didn't care about anybody like you know, I always say, like, I don't I don't look at the haters. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I also had deep conversations with with people, which my family members, my parents, um, and they were important because being in the Latino family, like machismo, like this concept of like, you have to be like this man, you have to go to work. Um, you know, you have to take care of the house. And I'm oh, like, well, I... <laughs> yeah. I relate to that. Trust me, I do yeah and i'm like well i could do that being gay like i'm being queer so like you know what like i still went to school i still um wanted to organize and the cool thing was my my mom was an organizer so i grew up with her um understanding like how do you do community organizing how do you... she was like a union organizer so um i got to learn from that i did student organizing but one of the things was i was organizing outside of um, the San Fernando Valley. I went to um, school in Long Beach and all these other areas, and I would do all these events, conferences. And then one thing when I graduated was like, I came back home and I'm like, wow, I've done all this work, but I've been not doing anything at home that has anything to do with LGBT issues. So that's where I was like, we need to start something. And that's when when Somos, uh, the conversation of Somos Familia Valle started. I think I was like 20, 21. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and then yeah we started this this little small movement but now it's like yeah but yeah. to the conversation of the growth i look back and i'm like wow i'm still doing this work yeah <laughs> and now, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's incredibly admirable work and we have many people in our own community that are people of color that are lgbtq plus and they very much admire the work that you're doing here uh for someone's family and for the and for those marginalized need that kind of space and support um, that they can't, that unfortunately many can't even get at their own homes. And so we're doing really amazing uh, work and we here at Complete About would love to support you uh, through our donations and through just uh, signal boosting through uh, the very existence of this marathon. Um, and speaking of donations, um, when people donate to Somos Familia Valle, what exactly is it that they're donating for? Where is their money going? Yeah, so... Um... So any donation and all, 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 all proceeds to uh, Somos Familia Valle goes directly to our services, to our events, um, to our advocacy work, to our campaign work. So, uh, so the programs that we currently have is our um, youth council program, our men of color support group program, our women of color support group program. Uh, we have uh, Vogue, Vogue classes uh, twice a month uh, with our local drag queen, who's also part of a, a Vogue a house, uh, the House of Balmain. And then um, it goes to um, um, kind of like bi-monthly events. So we try to do events like quarterly. Um, the next one that we're doing is an out for mental health um, healing event uh, where we're going to, it's going to be a free community event for uh, people to get, um, uh, free yoga, free uh, meditation, sound bath. Uh, and we kind of want to do this after Pride because Pride is so busy for us that we kind of want to have a space for folks to just um, kind of uh, have a space just to think about mental health and the needs of mental health, especially when it be, uh, we talk about LGBT people of color uh, with so much happening. And even we just recently did a protest 
um, in our local elementary because all these conservative people were were against um, having LGBT curriculum in 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 our local schools. So uh, we just wanted to create a, a, an event that's like, okay, let's just get out of this like all this surrounding like focus on us and and take care of ourselves and and think about our mental health and our minds and our bodies. So that's that's an event that's coming up in October. Um, but yeah, uh, it goes to uh, events and programming like that. That's amazing. Uh, it's nice to see that like our, our donations are going to be helping uh, people find these kinds of spaces, especially because uh, we uh, a, lot, a lot of people need to find that kind of support and uh, they don't really know where to go. Um, and seeing all of these different events you hold throughout the year, it's very admirable work uh, because uh, you just we it's it's something that needs to be fought for. And something that needs to be uh, needs to be talked about, and having these support groups uh, really means a lot to people. You know, you're you're just trying to have a space for LGBTQ folks to learn about mental health, to learn about um, to learn about uh, sexual health, and all that jazz. And those are things that are very excluded when it comes to uh, the the majority of the public. Uh, educational system in the United States. And so it's something that's incredibly important and I highly, highly admire the fact that it's, uh, because it's something that is not nearly talked about enough, wouldn't you say? Yeah, so I, I think just adding to what you were saying is sometimes we're forgotten and sometimes we're erased. And sometimes people don't know how to invest in LGBT people because they don't invest in LGBTQ plus leadership. I think one of the things that I love about Somos is a lot, all, all our board members, like even the people on the top, we're all LGBT, right? And I think that's what we need to go into. Sometimes there's there's these big organizations and foundations and they say they do LGBT work, but they just have them as like a small staff, a small staff group or anything, but they don't invest in that leadership. Like we need also need to become board members. We also need to become um, leaders. We also need to lead events. Don't just invite us as a speaker. We want to know, we want to know the budgets. We want to know everything. And I think that's what I love about so most of the work that I do is like, it's a lot of leadership building. We want to take space. We deserve to be bosses and entrepreneurs and all that good stuff. Right. Um, I think I think that's where that's how we could really uh, liberate LGBT people and especially LGBT people of color. Exactly. Uh, you know, LGBTQ plus people of color, they exist and they deserve to be heard and be in positions of authority and power the same way that like uh, the straight white people are in positions <laughs> in, 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 the, in, in positions of power and in positions of authority. So it's something that's incredibly admirable that you're fighting for. And these spaces uh, in on your website, I saw three specific support groups, one for women of color over 18, uh, queer and trans men of, of color over the ages of 18, and as well as uh, youth, LGBTQ plus youth and their allies between the ages of 12 to 17. If someone wanted to participate in these uh, communities, whether it's it's like someone they know or themselves personally, uh, what could they expect when uh, going to one of these uh, support group meetings? Yeah, um, for sure they could uh, expect a, a welcoming space, a space of acceptance, a space that we want to get to know you. Um, what I love about our support groups and just like our groups in general, we're always like, like a family unit right like we're always like well come in like we're here and and about our support groups we always have like food and we always have like you know topics of, of our our group and stuff and it's always people from different like we have had gamers we have people from the leather community we've had teachers we've had people who are graphic design and it's so interesting because you get just to see like a mix of like people and then they're like oh wait we have all this connection because we either have um like we've dealt with um uh, our sexual identity or gender identity or like you know still trying to figure it out and i think uh having that space it's it always makes like okay this is how you build community and it's it's interesting to see like even like our youth members that are like aged out out of the our youth program like some of them like they still talk to each other they're still like going to college together and i'm just like i get so like oh my god they met through the youth council and then there's even one getting married and they met through our program <laughs> and i'm like That's oh amazing. my god <laughs> yeah and i'm like damn yeah. we've created this like you know like unit of community and like of solidarity and just the love for the valley like love for the 818 and like love for like 
you know, this area that's sometimes really under, you know, like we don't get as many resources, but we found each other. So I think with the essence of that, it's like we really built community. Yeah, and you can definitely see that in like the product of your work, as you can, as you can quite clearly see, based on all the community members that are still talking to each other even after growing out of like the youth groups. And that's absolutely an, an amazing time. And how would one go about uh, joining the community if they want to participate in one of these communities or these uh, support groups? Yeah, so the cool thing is this year, um, all of our programs, uh, so before uh, COVID, all of our programs were in different locations in San Fernando Valley, but we just got a grant from uh, LA County, so we're going to be uh, bringing all the programs into one location to the first LGBT community center in the San Fernando Valley, which we wrote this long grant that we were so like, oh my God, hopefully we get it. So all these programs are be are going to be coming to one place. So we're really excited. Um, but if they if anybody wants to join, uh, they could email um, info at somosfamiliavalle.org or DM us in our Somos Familia Valle Instagram. Um, some of the programs do have their own uh, emails, like uh, Men of Color has MLC at SomosFamiliaValle.org or Women of Color has uh, WOC at, at SomosFamiliaValle.org. Um, we also have our, our number that you could call um, and then we could uh, connect you with the services also. That's amazing. And these are free services, correct? Yes. Yeah, I they, that correctly they, on your own. Yes, we uh, everything we do is free. Our prize, our events, our programming, uh, all free. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. And if someone doesn't live in the San Fernando Valley area but wants to be involved to some capacity, how could they go about doing that? Yeah, so we've actually, um, s since we've been growing, we've do we've been doing a lot of uh, uh, work even outside of um, San Fernando Valley. So in LA County, we're involved in a, a HIV campaign uh, with a, a lot of uh, other uh, orgs in, the, in Los Angeles. We've also done national um, work um, through campaign work. So uh, the ones that we're doing right now is Immigrants RLA. So if, if you want to engage um, in uh, immigrant justice work and talking about how um, uh, funding could be distributed to immigrants in Los Angeles, uh, we are currently doing that work uh, with our county supervisors. And this represents all LA County. Um, nationally, uh, we do um, uh, the National Creating Change Conference. So we help host the, the Latinx Institute, which is a whole day um, conference for any um, Latinx LGBT organizer to come. And uh, I also help out um, distributing scholarships for people to come. It's a conference that is hosted once a year uh, by the National LGBT Task Force. So I help out do the Latino portion of, of that conference. And we always want volunteers to help out um, or, or contribute or, or even submit workshops or uh, in whatever way. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing. So you, you guys are at home. If you want to be involved in any of that, um, I highly recommend checking out the Somos Media Valley website, somosmediavalley.org, um, and see how you can get involved. As, uh, as Kevin said, you can also DM them on Instagram. And especially if you're in uh, the California, LA, or even the San Fernando uh, Valley area, I highly recommend checking them out and seeing how you can get involved if you're interested. Um, and one final thing that I wanted to ask is that beforehand, you mentioned that you are working on a new campaign currently uh, with Somos Familia Valle, how's that going? What is it? What can we expect from that? Yeah, so currently our Men of Color support group is going to uh, release a campaign for um, so Start Talking HI, uh, HIV with the CDC. Uh, so um, currently uh, Latino MSM, which is men who have sex with men, are having high rates of HIV infections, which has been growing like on, you know, through data has been growing. And so we're, tr we're trying to create more awareness for uh, Latinos, um, MSM communities to really um, learn about PrEP, learn about uh, U equals U, uh, learn about, um, you know, all the options that you could get for um for HIV prevention and resources. So we'll be releasing a campaign um, in the next month, uh, 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 kind of like a photo project campaign and like a, a social media campaign. But yeah, if folks could share, we're gonna have some facts um, about uh, Latino HIV rates and all that. So we'll, we'll be having that um, released. It sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, well. That pretty much does it for all of the uh, questions that we have 
for you today. Again, everyone at home, uh, if you enjoyed this interview and you enjoyed any information that Kevin has given to us today, I highly recommend checking out SomosMediaLaya.org, seeing how you can get involved, how you can be part of the change that you wish to see in the world, and how you can even donate to uh, their cause and have on any way that you can, especially if you live in the San Fernando Valley area, or how you can benefit from these services that Somos Media Laya offers and check out their newest campaign uh, with the, with, uh, the men of color in the CDC. Um, that's going to be absolutely amazing work. Uh, Kevin, is there anything, uh, any final words you want to say before we head out for the day? Yeah, so thank you everybody for donating. I, I am watching um, and I am following. So it, it's it's great to see. I always like I like watching gamer <laughs> gamers and, and and it's always cool to see that they're they're playing the um, the old school video games. So um, I'm just thank I we really um, thank you for the support. Oh, for sure. And yeah, and we've already raised $570, most of that being on the first day. Uh, and that's pretty good uh, uh, based on the events that we've had in the past. And so I'm super excited to see how much we raise throughout the rest of the week. We have four more days uh, of amazing content for everyone. And I hope that uh, more people like uh, from the Somos Unidad Valle um, community can check out the stream and, uh, and uh, benefit from uh, the donations that are being sent over to social media via from everyone in chat. And I hope that everyone here can donate because it's going to be uh, an yes. amazing cause. All right. Well, that's all for this interview. I hope that the rest of you enjoy Complete Fun 2023. Again, thank you so much to Kevin uh, Perez for being here and for doing this interview. Uh, we highly appreciate it. And uh, we hope that the rest of you can enjoy the rest of the day. Up next, uh, we have Super Metroid Expedition Z. My sense, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, again, thank you so much, Kevin. And I hope uh, that uh, someone's going to be grows and succeeds as much as they possibly can. And thank you. And thank you to the team. And thank you to everyone watching and donating. Um, we really appreciate the support. And yeah, jo join the movement. <laughs> of course. We'll, we'll see you all in a bit. Have a good one. Bye, everyone. I want to give another shout out to Kevin for being here with us and chatting with Osmore in a bit about Somos Familia Valle. Uh, it was incredible to hear about all the amazing work that they're doing, some of their origins and how just a small group of community members can really expand into something so big and so impactful and so much larger than the sum of our parts. So thank you again so much, Kevin. We are honored to be here raising money for an incredible cause. And for that cause, we have about five, four more days? What day is today? Four more days, four and a half days, three and a half days. Oh my gosh, I can't do math. Uh, apologies, chat. Um, you know, just tell me the number of days and hours. Uh, I'll apparently need some help here. Uh, but we got three and a half more days of incredible speed running to continue raising money for Somos Familia Valle. Uh, as mentioned before, we are at $570 already. I believe we have a goal uh, for the marathon of $2,000, and I know we can hit it. I know we could even beat it uh, if we're at 570 after day one of five. Uh, that sounds incredible, and if we can keep up this pace, uh, we can really make sure all of this money goes towards a cause that is very, very deserving and incredibly impactful in their community and the wider community as well. So yeah, thanks again, Kevin. Uh, incredible interview. Up next, we have Super Metroid Expedition Z. 100%. We have Linkemeister currently setting up for tech uh, to do that run and we'll be hanging out for, you know, the next just under an hour to uh, to see that incredible run. Um, as a as another reminder on Somos Familia Valle, uh, as you just saw from the interview before, we are here raising money for them. Uh, and I put it in the chat already, but exclamation point donate in order to see the Tiltify page. Uh, for them, as well as you can check out www.somosfamiliavalle.org exclamation point charity to grab that link. Uh, if you want to check out all of their programs, uh, they spoke about them in the interview very briefly. 
Uh, but there are so many incredible programs that you can be a part of, whether it is in person or virtually. Uh, this includes monthly meetings for multiple support groups, including women of color over the age of 18, LGBTQ plus youth and allies ages 12 to 17, and queer and trans, men's of, trans men of color over the age of 18. And all of these are completely free services. So while we get set up for the next run, uh, please go check out their calendar at somosfamiliavalle.org slash calendar if you or anyone you know is interested in these support groups. And again, uh, those are completely free. Highly recommend you get involved if you or anyone you know might want to check those out. And you know is interested in these support groups. And-